I've put about 400 miles on my McLaren in the last few weeks, and so far, so good. Nothing has broken at all, but I still don't have that fuzzy feeling inside. I still don't trust this car, and I want to hear the truth from the experts no matter what. I bought one of the highest mileage MP4-12C McLarens in the country, and it didn't come with any service history, and a cluster lit up like the Chicago skyline. But I managed to diagnose and repair my McLaren for a small fraction of what the dealer wanted. The ignition coils are uh, 2470. Plugs are right at 375. And the labor for both would be $1,790. Oh, about $5,000. And I fixed most of the lights by replacing the steering wheel airbag clock spring with a used part, and I fixed multiple engine misfires with new spark plugs and ignition coils from a Nissan Sentra for only $35 a piece. Everything seems too good to be true, and I'm hoping we're going to discover some expensive aftermarket goodies, but when these cars break, they can set your bank account on fire, so hopefully the McLaren experts don't find find anything major and the McLaren honeymoon phase can last forever. Hello, sir. Hello. <laughs> We're at the bays with one of my favorite people, Jason. Hey, Car bro. Supplies Warehouse, The Bays, Chicago Auto Pros. What what else, Jason? What else? Uh, it's a warehouse, <laughs> it's a retail store, it's a training facility, and today it's a leather repair training That's facility. That's right. Jason and the guys have brought in the big guns. We have Ram all the uh -huh. way from London, and he was the man behind the scenes of my E39 That's BMW right. seat restoration. So Ram helped me out with that entire procedure over the phone, and uh, now he's all the way here in Chicago ready to hopefully fix my McLaren interior. <laughs> Absolutely, no, it's, great it's timing. It's a little rough, the steering wheel mostly. The steering wheel, yes. Uh, I think, uh, you know, looking at it, a lot of the paint's just come off, but I think that can easily be fixed. All right, so step one with any restoration is to make sure that we clean the surface very, very well. And what are you using? I'm using our um, Geist Rapid Leather and Vinyl Cleaner. It's completely natural, no strong um, detergents or chemicals in it, so it's safe to use. So right now I'm just gonna do this bit first, just to make sure we get to the, the real color underneath. Okay, so that to me looks like sort of what the real color is gonna be like. So now we can use that part to to color match. When I go to body shops and have paint work done, they have a computer that measures that this all it. out yeah. perfectly. Yeah. And you're over here just freehand. Freehand. I mean, wow. um, it's how I learn. It's what I feel comfortable doing. Yeah. Um, sometimes it just takes a little bit longer. Personally, um, I'd be completely freaked out <laughs> with like yellow and pink in there. I'd be like, wait, what is going on? <laughs> yeah, it just takes a, a takes. A little bit of practice, but if you oh, can wow, see look that, at that. That's yeah, sort of... it's already transforming. All right, guys, so Ram is going to let me do the steering wheel. The worst part in the McLaren is all up to me to fix properly. <laughs> uh, what do we got? So, Cleaning. you got a clean brush, you got the Rapid um, Leather and Vinyl Cleaner Pro, which is a, a stronger cleaner, higher pH, um, but we want to remove a lot of debt on there, so. Yeah, I gotta say, when I drive this car, I'm never driving, I'm, I'm always kind of driving it like down here, so I'm actually surprised at how worn out this mm. is. All right, let me give it a wipe. This is gonna not only remove grease, but it's also going to get rid of any clear coat or top coat that's left on there. And you really wanna scrub it very, okay. very well. Just go to town with it. Yeah. Wow, look at that, even after scrubbing, that is insane. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just a combination of some dye, but a lot of grease, because grease, once penetrated inside, always turns into a darker color. All right, here comes the sanding. All right, so now we're wiping this down again. So I'm not as good as Ram, so I'm gonna mask this off because I'm afraid of getting the white on the black. Scrunch the, the sponge up a little bit, and you can just start wiping it on, okay. on the surface. So wipe, yeah, then dab over it, yeah. Some more there, so da, 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 da. so we're gonna wipe it wipe. all on, yeah, dab it, dab, and then we're immediately getting into drying. Yeah, you can just carry on, I'll keep dry, drying on the side. Oh, okay, I'll just give you the paint. We're done with the white part of the steering wheel, just taking the tape off right now. I mean, look at this, guys. So obviously with the steering wheel, we couldn't spray that. It'd be very difficult to not get over spray all over the place. Uh, but with our seats masked off, we are able to spray 
the color directly on the cream portion without getting it on the blue. And this is gonna go by much quicker and give us a much more even result. All right, guys, this is very, very exciting stuff. The steering wheel is almost done. This driver's seat is done outside of the leather conditioner after we let it dry for a little bit. Look at that, it's beautiful. All right, and here is the last step dry and friction blocker. And Ram, what exactly is this gonna do for us? So this is gonna prevent um, the steering wheel from further friction damage. Um, and that is the main thing on a, on a steering wheel, right? It needs prevention against friction damage. I was a little discouraged when I saw how bad this steering wheel looked. I'm like, are we really gonna be able to fix that? And this, this is 100%, guys. It has that factory satin kind of sheen to it now, and it's protected. This is amazing. And there really wasn't much dry time. Like, I can, I can drive this home pretty much now, right? Yeah. And for the seats, we're spraying the die and friction blocker with the gun. So it'll go on smoothly and even. He's using the heat gun to cure it. Yeah, dry it evenly and quickly so you don't get any runs. This is kind of like a protective shield we're putting over yeah. the leather. All right, guys, so we started off with this, a very grimy and worn out looking interior the steering wheel being the worst offender and the driver's seat coming in a close second. And we went all the way from that to this. So we just got done cleaning up all of the carpets. Everything is shampooed and look at our final product on the steering wheel. What a difference. I mean, honestly, you cannot tell that this isn't a brand new steering wheel at this point. It looks so, so good and it matches the seats perfectly now. Oh, and they also cleaned up all of the door panels. I mean, we did a full complete interior detail on this. So the dash, the screen, the center console, everything has been cleaned. And here is that passenger seat with a little McLaren logo up top. We even have the Alcantara headliner as well in excellent condition. So 65,000 mile McLaren interior, not looking too bad. Huge thanks to Ram, flew in all the way from London and you guys can check out all of his products. It's his own company. He's got a ton of experience, but just started his own. So check it out. I'll leave the link down below. It's leathercare.com. Thank you so much, brother. You did an amazing job. Thank you, thank you so much. And then these guys just basically sat here the whole time <laughs> and did absolutely nothing. So. <laughs> Look at that just hanging out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't ask, Greg. We cleaned up the exterior a little bit. I was cleaning this area here. I popped open the gas door and it broke. So now we have tape. Luckily, it's a satin finish clear tape that blends right in with the wrap. So if you guys can just not look at that, we clean the rest of the McLaren and it is looking fantastic. It's so much more enjoyable to drive this car now that the interior is refreshed. I mean, look at this steering wheel. So I gotta fix that gas door and then we're going to Cannonball Garage in Gilberts, Illinois. They are the McLaren experts and we're gonna look over the whole car and then hopefully get it on the dyno if it's safe. But before we do that, a buddy of mine just called me. He bought a sweet BMW at auction and he wants me to run a few checks on it and kind of see what's going on with it. I just pulled up. This is this is embarrassing. But whoa, look at this F250. This thing is mint. But here's the car we got to check out. A really cool spec M550i. And you know we're firing up the old Carly connected car to figure everything out on this one. Carly changed up their logo, so my new scanner is in the mail. You guys are going to get one that looks like this. But they all work the same. You simply plug this into your OB BD2 port and you'll get some lights on the bottom. And then Carly easily connects to the Carly app on your cell phone. My friend bought this at an auction that has a return policy and he wanted me to run a used car check. All right, what do we got? Carly's detected no tampering. Modern cars can still have the mileage tampered with in the cluster, but Carly scans multiple control units and it verifies that the VIN and the mileage reported is the same in those units. I've never seen this on any other scan tool, especially at this price point. So if you guys are looking to buy a used car, Hook it up to Carly first. Now he said a light came on the cluster, so we're gonna go to diagnostics, check for issues, and now it's gonna scan every control unit on the car. This is always fun, 63 issues found.
down. Let's just go right into engine, intake manifold, pressure sensor issue, mass airflow sensor. Okay, those seem to be related. All right, let's enter in smart mechanic. And here's something I absolutely love about Carly. You don't have to be a mechanic to diagnose issues on your car because of smart mechanic. They'll give you potential consequences and causes. So if you guys had a check engine light with these codes, here you go. Here's some easy steps you can take to start visually inspecting your engine and you could potentially fix issues like this without spending an arm and a leg. There's so much you can do with this app. You can reset service and maintenance indicators and the fun stuff, coding. There's seven compatible ECUs and the options are endless. If you don't want all these disclaimers to constantly pop up in your cluster, you can turn those off. You can even change the logo at startup in the center screen. So right now it's BMW. Let's go with M Performance Code Car. There we go. The coding possibilities with Carly are endless and I've even programmed factory lap timers into instrument clusters and much more. And if you click on my link down below, it'll take you to the Carly website where you can type in your specific car and it'll tell you exactly what Carly will do for you because there are some cars that allow more coding than others. So if you're looking for something specific, definitely check that out. Also, when you're on their website, type in code LEGIT23 for a limited time only. That's gonna get you 15% off your very own Carly OBD2 scanner and coding tool. So check it out, link down below. Well, luckily I had a few days in between getting the leather fixed and the dyno at Cannonball Garage, and I can't show up to Arnie's shop with tape, with tape on my gas. That's just, it's not a McLaren thing to do. But I must say I retaped it and I think I did a pretty darn good job. This isn't going anywhere. Well, hopefully it doesn't peel off the wrap. But you can kind of see what this would look like if this was a gloss finish. Kind of nice. Okay, yeah, maybe this was a little overboard. There we go. Okay. Ah. All right, didn't ruin anything. Just have to clean this up. So this is the latch for the fuel door, and it's uh, it's a pretty cheap piece of thing. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, this is, this is bad. And this is $80 at McLaren, or you can get this part from Home Decor Hardware. And it was only $1.96, so this little latch that's used to hold the fuel door shut on a McLaren is also used in kitchen cabinetry and in drawers, like stuff that would be in your bedroom or your closet. So McLaren recycled this little part from probably homedecor.com or wherever I ordered it from, and they charge $80 for it, which actually I'm surprised it's that cheap. I just assumed everything at McLaren was like a minimum of $500. Like you couldn't even charge anything under that at the dealership, but anyway, Quite the markup, McLaren. So I'm at my home garage, obviously, and I brought my little needle nose pliers that supposedly we can just pull this up. And sometimes they break on their way out, but we don't, we don't really care. All right, those needle nose pliers are not doing the trick. I think a plastic wedge will do it though. I just need to, just need to get in there. Oh, here we go. Oh, it's breaking, that's fine. Break away, I don't care. And guys, I did try taking all these screws out to lift it up and you can't. There's hoses attached and everything at the bottom. You'd have to take a lot more apart. All right, this is great. So I'm basically breaking around the edges. So now we might be able to pull it up easier. Really need the right tools for the job. There we go. Sweet, we got it. All right, out with the old and in with the new. You can see here that these little tabs just simply broke off. Honestly, this is like a wear item. You probably have to do this like every couple of years. All right, so now this should just slide right in. Like that, good, good. Woohoo! we fixed a McLaren for $1.97. And I bought a five pack of these little guys. I'm gonna keep them in the car. I mean, I know a lot of guys like rally supercars and stuff. Imagine being on a rally and your fuel door's broken. What are you gonna do? buy a five pack from a home decor website and, and you're all set. It's a few days later and we're at Cannonball Garage and Arnie, the owner, is another van lover. Look at this right here, gentlemen. Duramax diesel, what a monster. Look at how nice it is. Oh, and we're out in the country. We are out in the country. This is definitely the kind of car you want when you're when you're out in the country. Arnie, the, the, the van, up, the, the van. <laughs> I know we're here to do McLaren stuff, but we gotta check out that van. Oh, we'll check it out later. I'm back at Cannonball Garage with, with the cheap one. But, but, this car has not had a check engine light 
or anything in the last roughly 400 miles after we did the coils. I mean, that's probably some kind of record. All right, you guys know Arnie, my long lost brother. Arnie has a Trans Am, I have a Trans Am. Arnie has a van, I have a van. We, we, had, we met late in the automotive life. We did, we did. Just to discover that we have a lot of similar tastes. <laughs> and yeah, Arnie owns uh, the best McLaren shop in the whole world. This is one of the only places you can come to to get McLaren service outside of the dealer. And he gets cars from like all over the country, right? Yeah, no, people, we just did a motor for a guy uh, out of San Francisco. Yeah. So we flew in, picked it up, drove it home. Where else are you gonna go? And he's a half hour from me, that's great. <laughs> it's fate. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna be putting the McLaren on Arnie's dyno um, to basically discover everything about the car because I have no service history on this McLaren, um, but I do suspect that it's tuned. It's got a lot of pops and crackles when you let off the exhaust. It's much louder than factory, so I think it's got an exhaust. Um, so we're gonna discover everything about it but the most important part, aside from seeing how much power this thing makes, is to double check that it's safe because I've learned that McLaren engines can blow up. I'm freaked out with this car as it is because it's so expensive to fix. So hopefully it's safe because we don't want this to happen. We're one of the very few, we have to actually have an engine program for these McLaren. So I'll let Ivan kind of uh, show you the differences in the engines and things. So Ivan cleared out my airbag light and he works on McLarens pretty much all day long. Which engine is this out of? This is a rod out of a 675 LT. Uh, this was a special engine that they made uh, more horsepower by lightening the rods. Uh, this is a a super lightened rod here. It's missing half of it. You mean lightened by McLaren or? Yeah, okay, they, that's they put a in, factory rod. Yeah. Okay. So it's a, it's a it's a it's a factory rod that uh, they made lighter so that the engine could spin up faster. Um, they had special camshafts that were paired with this. Uh, it made a little bit more power than the, the regular 650 model, um, but it created a weak point. Um, I mean, even the beefier rods that you would see in the 650 or a 720, um, you can see the, the beam is a lot wider. Here, here's oh, you're a, right, look at that. Here's an unbroken rod to compare to. <laughs> oh, this is the 675 yep. also, wow. So you've got a much thicker beam, but if you look real close, this, this rod is not straight. It's got a hook to it. This came out of a, a 720 core engine that we were gonna build. Um, Wait, so even these are having issues too? Oh yeah. <laughs> You got to be careful. What's going on here, McLaren? Uh, as soon as you start uh, <laughs> pushing things beyond factory power levels, I mean, you risk. I mean, that's part of uh, part of the game we play. So yeah. we try and keep it below this level, and uh, you know, it's kind of uh, hit or miss. So sometimes. Ivan, what I'm hearing here is just open up the ring gap on a stock 5.3 out of a junkyard, and your LS will hold up to 800 horsepower on E85. That's that's all I'm saying. Yes. <laughs> This is by far one of the most impressive shops I've ever been to. They work on McLarens. They also work on Nissan GTRs. And check this out. Check out the exhaust. I, I don't think I've ever seen an exhaust this big outside of on a diesel truck. This is wild. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Needless to say, this, this car is probably kind of fast. You've got to be kidding me on this GTR. <laughs> Whoa. I can't believe we can lift this with just normal lift arms. It gives me hope I can lift it up on my own shop. Look at the underneath of this car. Wow. And we just have a little hockey puck. And we're lifting it from here. Okay. All right. I didn't know that. Wow, look at the whole underneath is just totally smooth. So cool. You can see the sticker right here where you're supposed to lift it, but this is the carbon fiber tub. That's where we're lifting it from. What is this? Oh wait, this is just a brake pad sensor that someone zip tied out of the way. Okay, that is definitely not what you want to see on your McLaren that they're cheaping out on. I don't know what they were doing there. They got the wrong brake pads? That's very strange. Have you ever seen that, Ivan? Why did they do, why did they do that? It may be a pad that doesn't accept it. Those are, I mean, the, the backing on that's yellow. It might be an EBC yellow. All right, so then the, the car was definitely tracked. Actually, the only service history I have in this car was that it was at the McLaren dealer in Chicago for a track prep like three years ago. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd say it's about time for brakes too. If you look at the uh, the level on this side. Yeah, yeah, it might need some brakes soon. Okay, at least they're not carbon ceramic brakes. Missing uh, the majority of your air guide here. It's a portion of this one missing. Those uh, hold it to the ground, evacuates the air from underneath the car. It gives you some more downforce. 
I gotta say, I mean, I was noticing a little lack of down downforce in my Chicago commute. <laughs> yes. So far, this looks relatively dry. A little bit of uh, dirt, possibly uh, oil back here, but we'll get the covers off and really see what's going on here. You may or may not have a spark plug that falls out on your head back here. I'm right. just saying, I've heard things. Do we, do we hear a spark plug yet? No. Not yet. Okay, watch your eyes. Okay. We're gonna set it down. Hey, where's my spark plug? I swear I heard it fall down all the way, I guess. It's in here somewhere. Definitely got a little coolant leak going on. That is typical. All right, we found some stuff. Yeah. A clip. I'll, I'll just, just put that right here. And this is your TPMS sensor. Wow, she is dirty. That is the water pump. And it's driven. She but... is definitely dripping. You've got a weep hole right here. It's at the top of that plug, when the seals leak, basically it comes out and starts dripping down. So okay. that'll have to be replaced. All right, so you got a little minor water pump leak. How much, how much is this water pump? Uh, I don't do pricing. Uh, the water pump is gonna be kind of expensive, but the labor is kind of a pain in the butt. It's yeah. chain driven off of the crankshaft, so there's a little bit of labor that gets involved in uh, getting that thing swapped around. All right, well, that's that's fixed. There it oh, is. Oh, there she is. Might be hot. Yeah, it's hot. Okay. We found it. Wow. She is wedged. I Seriously. think I'm going to need a little bit of a pry bar action. I didn't get wedged. Look at that. That's crazy. Come on, girl. You can do it, I've been. There yeah, he did it. One highly expensive spark plug. Yeah, there we go. We'll just put it on the table of carnage. Oh, speaking of carnage, you guys want to see some more? I even dug out even more carnage. This is out of a 720. Uh, so this one had a rod failure that destroyed the entire engine. Uh, and then a completely different engine had a valve train issue. So you can see here we have a broken valve spring and that guy got lucky. It was just head damage. You didn't have to replace the entire thing. And here's yet, yet another 720. So, yeah. So yeah, you definitely want to be careful with your McLaren engine. And, and if you don't believe me, then, then here. Yeah, so you definitely want to keep the torque down in your McLaren or else this uh, happens to parts of your engine and they come out the bottom of your engine. It's not good. While uh, inspecting under here, I figured out why this thing makes some more noise. If you take a look up here, these are non-factory heat shields. These are soft shields that are typically associated with downpipes. Okay. So if you look up there, you got some aftermarket downpipes on there. And uh, don't tell the EPA, but I um, think you might, might be missing something that goes between the turbo and maybe the flex section. Ivan, I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Good, let's keep it that way. <laughs> yeah, look at that, aftermarket downpipes, wow. I wonder why this thing is so fast. Not that I have anything to compare it to. When I bought this McLaren, that was the first time I'd ever physically touched a McLaren. I've never been in one or anything before my own. Uh, but it, it is really fast. And downpipes in a tune, that, that makes these things pretty fast. Yeah, you got a little coolant leak. Um, I don't see any oil leaks. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's relatively dry. Well, let's go topside and see what we can find. It looks very factory. Okay, I love the car Indiana Jones discovery. Like we have no idea what's going on. We just found downpipes, which are probably like $5,000. I just assume everything is a minimum of that. All right, let's see. Ugh. I am the worst at this. Ah, there we go. We had found the last time we were here that they had deleted the intake sound generator. Is that what it's called? Yep, yeah. ISGs. Right, so it would actually pipe noise into the cabin of the car. Um, which is quite amazing because I, I think it sounds awesome the way it is. So I, I couldn't imagine. Is it just loud and annoying? Is that why people do it? No, apparently. Um, so they put a little throttle body on the intake manifold and it opens up at times and allows that noise to go um, through this pipe. That pipe matches up to like kind of a drum, let's say, that's on the back so it can vibrate. If that starts to leak, then you've got a boost leak and a vacuum leak. So oh, okay. uh, they delete that to you know, ensure you don't have an issue there. Okay. Um, I can definitely see on this side, I don't know about you on your side, but uh, I can see back in there the uh, 
the heat shields for the downpipes. There's only a tube that runs from the one bank to the other. That would normally house a muffler. So it's definitely an aftermarket exhaust. So they replaced the downpipe, they replaced the whole system yep. basically, okay. Oil filter housing's right here. So if we wanted to do an oil change, now would be the time to do it. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do it then. Cool. And of course, I came prepared. We have the Zero W40 European uh, and a filter. Actually, I bought, I bought two filters because one's a D2 and one's a D3. I'm not sure what the difference is. Some people on the internet said one, some people said the other. I don't know. The oil filter is super easy to get to on this car. It's right on top. Only downside to the oil filter being here is, that, is trying not to get oil everywhere. Right. Well, you've seen a lot of metal shavings in engines of McLaren, so. We'll pull this thing apart and actually uh, do a forensic on it, yeah. which uh, will really tell you the condition of the engine. So the best way to really see what's going on in your engine is to cut the filter apart and take a look at what it's trapped. Okay, I'm getting nervous now, Ivan. No need, no need to, to get nervous. We're all good here. There's plenty of need, Ivan. You just showed me blown up engines galore. <laughs> we can get a better look at this when we squeeze the oil out of the filter elements or the pleats. Handy dandy bench vise here. Okay, let's hope we didn't strike gold or copper in this case. So, looks pretty decent. I mean, there's definitely some flakes of stuff here and there. It's not atypical to see this. Right, in my experience, you pretty much always get that. When you really start to worry is when you start to see copper. So these small metal flakes that you're seeing here are aluminum or steel. Um, we can tell by running a magnet across there. But when they're a silver color, we're not highly worried about it unless we see a lot. Um, it's the copper stuff that we really worry about. When I worked at Mercedes, we would do this every so often, and it's really nice having these cartridge filters because on a lot of cars that have the metal oil filter, when you cut that in half, you introduce a lot of metal particles in there as well. You have to be really gentle when you're cutting those open, but these are simple, and we would typically see the same thing. I was interested in this a lot early on in my Mercedes career because there were 10 and 12,000 mile oil change intervals, and I thought that was way too long. And uh, yeah, you would, see, you would see basically this. Each and every part of this inspection gets us a little bit closer to the dyno, which puts a lot more butterflies in my stomach as well, but watch JR go beat on this car a few times, and so did I, and nothing bad happened, so we should be good. What's the factory McLaren interval for an oil change? If I'm not mistaken, it's 10,000 miles. It's, one year or 10,000 miles. That's ridiculous. I know a lot of McLaren owners don't drive 10,000 miles in one year, but why, why? You know, you'd think they'd have a McLaren owner conditioned, you know, to spending money on service to where they could tell them, hey, come in every 3,000 miles, like the old days, and get an oil change. Like, why risk it? I don't get that. And you'll hear my torque wrench click too when it gets there. I'm getting close. Where's that click? Where's that click? Click. There it is. All right. I'm not the only one with a torque wrench that doesn't look like a torque wrench at all, but makes click noises. So on the McLaren oil change kits, we end up with uh, O-rings for these two, brush washer for this. Uh, looks like uh, what you got is a little bit short. Oh, look at that, we got a little oil leak there. Maybe they didn't replace the brush washer. Proper protection, folks, all the time. Gloves, safety glasses, face masks. Listen, this is moisturizer, okay? Yes. It's free moisturizer for your hand. And I gotta say, for the type of car that this is, it gets pretty decent fuel economy. We got 22 MPG on the highway from Kansas. My CTS-V wagon gets 18. I mean, this is lighter and more aerodynamic, but still, why does my CTSV get such bad mileage? That'll, it bothers me. Just gonna let it continue to drip while gotcha. I do the other gotcha. drain areas here. There we go. All right, I, I, need, I need a little moisturizer myself here. Let me get in here. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, all right. Thanks, it's enough moisturizer. This plug is actually interesting. It uh, drains two separate ports. So this part goes up top and like seals off, well not completely, but it helps seal off a passageway that uh, 
also gets drained. Yeah, this is one of the most interesting drain plugs I've seen. Pretty cool. It's like a little little barbell. These are the, yeah, the turbo drain, drain oh, line. Oh, the turbo drain lines? Yep. Oh yeah. Wow. There is definitely a lot in there. Yeah. The oil filter or oil service kit. So these are the O-rings for the uh, turbo oil return lines. We've got our crush washer for the oil drain plug and then our specialty plug and crush washer. Oh, and you just replace the whole and thing. I think they replace this because uh, you know it's a Torx fitting and they tend to get torqued up pretty tight and wear out over time, so. Okay, I'll have a little souvenir then. Venture to say many people don't change those. And, um, Perfect. We can sit here all day and wait for it to stop dripping, but it's not going to, so. We're just gonna clean it up, start putting it back together. Click. All right, so we're tightening up. <laughs> that is so pretty. I don't know if it gets any better than that. That's a really cool color too. That's the owner. <laughs> this is what was draining during that time. Seems to slow drain a little bit, so. Oh yeah. So, it's okay. not a ton, but it's significant enough where I find it nice to let it finish draining. One of those why not type of things, you know? You're doing something else anyways. Yeah. So. New crush washer. Click. They don't mess around here at Cannonball. They're cleaning up and degreasing my under engine panels. This definitely needed it. This is original McLaren dirt. some satisfying stuff right there. Wow. I watched you clean this earlier, yeah. and you can see it's already developed a leak. Yeah. This is gonna be a sooner rather than later fix. Definitely. Here's your guide, here's your tensioner. It's just spring-loaded. So on the earlier models, they only had two bolts that held this to the water pump. You need to replace it. It'll, it'll come with a new uh, sprocket. Okay. So um, make sure to get that. So uh, there's a cover that allows you to access these bolts on the front of the water pump. Oh, Let me grab nice. a water pump yeah. and I'll show you. Wait a minute, I'm missing a lug bolt. What in the world? I never knew that. I've never had these wheels off. Great. There's a gasket that goes here and then a second gasket that goes here in the front cover. Okay. So that'll allow you to access that. Ball head, five millimeter, usually gets to those. You might have to turn the motor over a little bit. Okay. Um, to get to all those, but yeah. Basically. But I don't have to, but as far as relieving the tension. So it's, it's just going to drop down into place. It's gonna be a little finicky trying to get it in place. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be just like this, like you don't have to. You'll see. Oh, okay, there we go. So, oh, you know, okay. pulling on it or putting something up in there and kind of pushing against the side will allow you to uh, okay. get that lined up. Not bad. We got the good stuff going in. All right, drink up, little buddy. Little Nissan-derived 3.8 liter. Okay, don't mind the tire pressure fault. We still have the thing disconnected. So right now he's adding a little bit more oil. We have to add a little and then start it back up, add a little, start it back up. Uh, just kind of a procedure here so we don't over or underfill. It's very important on this car. We have oil in it, new filter, everything's tight. Uh, I believe the panels are clean. We'll put stuff back together and uh, we'll take it outside, warm it up, get it to that point, and then throw it on the dyno. Our super clean panel is going back in. With the proper bolts. Fix that TPMS issue real quick here. There we go. This is so weird for me because I'm usually doing all the work. <laughs> I feel you Not think bad. you feel weird. <laughs> well, yeah, you're on camera, so, you know, we're both kind of doing something a little bit outside of the ordinary. <laughs> I think it's that just needs, that. Maybe needs a little piece of foam in there. Yeah. Yeah. Next time. All right. Maybe it's right, cross threaded. The wheel's coming off because the bolt was not going in. It may not have had a bolt in there for quite some time, and now it's got a rust buildup on it. Great. It it's, wants to start straight, but not go straight. Let me get a tab, maybe we can chase it. All right, hopefully these threads aren't too garbled up. We'll be able to tap them out. Look at this, guys. They use Amsoil here at Cannonball Garage too, break-in oil. And they straight up build McLaren engines. It's, it's the best. Link down below, 25% off. Wait, what? Look at that. 
We got all sorts of good AMS oil stuff here. We may be successful. Yay. There's a good chance someone just left the thing out and it just got rusty. Oh, it's golden. Burnished. It's good. Miracle oil that helped us fix that's it. That's right, that's right. These are fine. I'm gonna put the black one in the hole that we had the issue with. Just to remember. So that you know for future reference. See, this this is the bad one. Probably is. This is it torques. We need to take this off in order to strap it to the dyno. Uh, yeah. Doing a little bit of cleaning and weight reduction too. This is really cool. We can take a look at the rear frame rails and this car has a clean Carfax, no accidents or anything like that. And we can definitely tell from looking at it from here. Uh, transmission going on, dual clutch, seven speed. And it looks dry, everything looks good. I don't wanna jinx myself, but the car's pretty solid. They're almost done strapping down the McLaren and I, I thought my, my eyes were deceiving me here. A 225 wide tire on the 675 LT. And then I just started looking at other McLarens. They're very narrow tires. Like that's a 235, I guess I'm assuming mine is as well. The 720 gets a 245. All right, so everybody out there that thinks they need a super wide tire to have a good handling car, I, I guess you don't. Stan, you've been here for a while. What's your guess? How much power? Yeah, tune and downpipes probably. 650. Okay. Steel wheels. All right. Max, what's your estimate for horsepower and torque here? Uh, I'm going to say 215 horsepower and 578 torque. He's very conservative. Yes, he is. The car comes with like 620 crank horsepower. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it's got a tune because I'm pretty sure it does. And the downpipes. Um, I'm going to say 630 wheel. Yeah. Torque, I'm going to say like 565 foot pounds. 650. You think 650 wheel? I don't know. 650, sure. Okay. All right. I like it. Let's make it happen. are broken at this point but it shot flames on the d-cell that's crazy <laughs> oh i hope the camera picked this up we could have just blown out all the mics and you might not even be able to hear anything i'm saying right now all right max power 579 horsepower torque 499 yeah and he brought it up to about 8400 rpm okay it shot flames uh, i believe it you're like yeah whatever alex <laughs> you know what we have on this dyno <laughs> No, it did all right. Yeah. It's uh, far less than 650, but uh, it's good. Yeah. Well, uh, how is AFR? Um, we don't have the ability to log that currently. Oh, okay. So we're kind of flying in the dark. The, uh, the ability to monitor is being hampered by your OBD2 port right now. Oh, is it um, not working? Yeah, it's not working. I've got uh, M Engineering working on it, trying to get us some information on uh, uh, what's going on, but uh, these earlier cars do have problems with the OBD2 port. Oh, okay. So it is a little bit rough down low. This is your torque line, and you can see it's a little bit jagged. Um, I'd love to see that fixed. If we were able to hang torque out, um, it would definitely make 650 horsepower, but uh, yeah, it pretty much falls off after 5,400 RPMs. Yeah. We can make another couple passes and see if it smooths out at all. That was the first, you know, hard run after an engine reset. So we can make a couple more runs, see what happens. All right, run number two. I am staying far, far away. I was in this corner before. It hurts. Yes. Okay, 
a little less. It's heating up probably. Very unhappy on the second run for sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely made less power on there, but that was just a few minutes later, so it's probably just heating up. 565. Stan's the only one prepared for this McLaren. He's he's learned from all the other really loud yeah, safety first. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to call it quits here on the dyno. We're having some OBD2 port issues. Uh, Ivan said as he was plugging in his McLaren scan tool, the whole cluster started freaking out and he had to clear out like 90 codes. And I guess that's another common issue with these earlier 12 Cs uh, is some of the pins will loosen up in there. So I have to go through that connector and fix it all. So we can't log AFR. And to be honest with you, we don't know who's tuned this car. It looks like it does have a tune in it though. And it's just very jagged and and we don't really like it. So there's just no point to really push it any further right now. But luckily the Cannonball spec McLaren tunes are some of the best in the entire country. So I think it's best that I replace the water pump, we fix the pins on the OBD2 connector, and then I'll bring it back here and actually have Cannonball tune this car. And we're gonna keep the torque a little bit lower so you know, we don't we don't have a Tavares situation on our hands where the whole thing just kind of blows up and scatters all over the place. I, I don't want that. All right guys, we will be back here at Cannonball Garage soon with the McLaren. Big thanks to these guys for inspecting my car, telling me everything I need to do, and, and I'm glad we found there was some issues with the tune. So I will be back after some repairs on the car and we'll see how much power this thing really makes. And we gotta go for a blast out here in the country Let's do it. of Mexico. So with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe. If you haven't already, we're almost at a million subscribers. So if you've been watching for a while, just hit the button, it's free, unlike things on this car. They're not free. <laughs> Most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video. So much noise. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Okay. I love my McLaren. Please don't blow up. <laughs> Go away, diesel truck. You don't have the key in your pocket. Oh, aha, I'm not that bad. Another one. That's a different. Come on. Watch as Ivan breaks this tap off. It can't get any worse. Oh, it, it can. Had, it had no bolts. <laughs> no problem, people. No problem.